So welcome to Buxton. This is our, our farm shop, um, which we're not going to go inside today, but uh, and we obviously grow fresh seasonal produce um, in our growing fields. Um, and we're here today to share, hopefully, some good stuff for you. So I'm David. And I'm Tracy. And our farm shop is open two half days a week. Um, we have a really loyal customer base. Lots of our customers come twice a week because they know they're going to get the freshest produce and the freshest produce is going to be the best for you nutritionally. And if you're eating seasonally, it's also going to be the best for you. We've walked down from the farm shop and we're out into our growing field now where we grow all our crops. Um, so we've got 16 acres here and it's laid out in uh, 0.4 of a hectare, one acre plots, and there's eight of those which we grow our vegetables in. So the layout means that one year in four, we take a cash crop off of vegetables and the other three years, it's down to herbal lays and building fertility in the soil. Um, we feed our polytunnels uh, with soil improver. We make our own compost um, and we take um, spent hops from our local brewery. So these spent hops that came in last week, a green waste from the veg business, um, and some coffee grinds. And basically we're turning this every week or two um, and breaking it down. And then on this other side, this is a year on, and basically after about six months, we started incorporating some wood chip as well. So the wood chip tends to be composted for about six months before we start adding it in. And what we're finding with the wood chip, it holds the nutrient in and stops the um, soil improver breaking down too quickly. And we're just about to start a trial with some um, fleece from uh, the local um, herd of um, sheep and see if we can add that in as well. But it takes quite a bit to break down, so we'll put a thin layer of that in the bottom and then keep turning it and breaking it down. And hopefully from that we'll get obviously some other um, microbiology, because obviously it's not clean fleece, and that'll keep the whole process working. So this is our reservoir, um, so this holds a million and a half gallons when it's full. Um, it's great not just for watering all the crops um, and fulfills all of our irrigation, but really good for bringing more wildlife into the fields. What you can also see here is that we're working with the landscape um, to minimise any wind damage. So the banks of the reservoir are the first point of curve up, then we've got the two small propagation tunnels and the wind arcs up and over them. and then. The big salad polytunnels point away from us, but they've got hooped ends so that again, we're working, encouraging the wind to go up and over instead of slamming against traditional flat ends of polytunnels. Um, we have lost some to hurricanes in the past and one to a tornado. So we've started to really work with the natural landscape and encourage that flow up and over rather than um, having the damage. So this is one of our propagation tunnels and in here we've got the first of the winter salad. So we'll plant 10,000 plug plants through the autumn and those will keep us going with our salad right through till next Easter. Um, so we sow every, grow everything from seed ourselves. Um, on the sides we've got cucumbers and we're using the cucumbers growing up recycled football nets to create shade for the plants in here so it's not too intense. This particular tunnel is covered with a product called ETFE, which is endlessly recyclable into itself again. Um, and that was a project that we did with Warwick University. So you can see the light um, is much, much better than with the standard opaque polytunnels. This is tunnel number seven. So we've got 11 polytunnels all together and every year everything moves along one tunnel. So even though the tunnels always stay in place, the crops rotate through them. Um, we're drip irrigating these, so these IBCs get filled up with water from the reservoir and then we're directing that water just to exactly where we want it. So we're minimising water wastage and we're minimising the number of weeds coming up. So in here we've got sweet potatoes. Uh, we planted 60 plants in the spring and each one will produce an average of three kilos of sweet potato. So it's a really good crop for us. And we've realised that um, they're really good companions to melons. Um, the melons, you know when they're ready, when they smell absolutely amazing. So there is quite a bit of the summer spent going along and sniffing melons. <laughs> so this is one of our um, 11 polytunnels, um, each one of roughly 200 square meters. 
Most of the reason for the polytunnels is to grow winter salad. We also grow a few hot crops as we call them, tomatoes, peppers, chilies, aubergines, sweet potatoes and melons. This one's just been topped, getting ready for the winter salad plugs. Um, and obviously we grow a clover mix through the summer, trying to avoid it going to sea, but feeding the soil by obviously fixing nitrogen from the atmosphere. And then as it comes out, we shall put some of our homemade soil improver on and then plant through with our plug plants. So here you can see this year's open field veg plots. Um, as I said before, 0.4 of a hectare. And this is, as we've walked across, this is now the third one in the series of four. Um, you can see we've got our crops covered with fleece. We don't use any agrochemicals on any of our crops. So basically we use fleece mainly to keep off pigeons, butterflies, which obviously would lay eggs and then have caterpillars. And we're just, most of them have now been uncovered, but these are the last two to uncover as we go into the autumn when the risk of butterflies laying eggs is disappearing. So for the last couple of years, we've been trialing living mulches using um, white clover. Last year we used several different sizes uh, and the smallest one we've used is called Aberace. Um, that's been very successful, although a bit challenging this growing season due to the, the slugs. But you could say the slugs lived on the clover and didn't destroy some of our brassica crop. So basically we've been sowing lines between our brassicas which is actually bringing forward the fertility phase of our crops. So we've actually got a living mulch while we're taking a cash crop off. And you can see a good example down here between the kales of this clover line, which is established at the same time as planting out the plug plants. This plot is currently being grazed by the sheep. Um, we're very lucky that um, our friends at Chilton Grounds Farm bring their sheep to graze our herbal lays. Um, you can see here um, the lovely donation that they've made to our soil fertility. We've got some nice fresh droppings here. We've got some dry droppings over there and they rotate around the plot. So this will be next year or the year after. Next year, 2025 ne veg field this is. Yep. Um, the other thing that the sheep bring into the field is a lot more birds. Um, so it's really interesting to watch the interaction. The birds are obviously looking for beetles and things in the droppings. Um, they also like to perch on the sheep's backs and peck any insects. So everybody's happy. And, and, the, and the sheep also save us having to top these um, herbal lays. So saving us obviously time and fossil fuels from the tractor to top them. So that's another benefit. The only things we'd have to top for is if we get problems with thistles, etc. This is one of our four agroforestry tree lines. So we've divided up the different growing plots, bringing trees into the middle of the field, which then brings more wildlife, more birds. It will also eventually create more windbreak. So we've got um, some stone fruits, some plums and some gauges. Then we've got early apples, mid-season apples, and right down at the bottom, where it's the coolest part of the field, we've got the latest apples, so that that blossom comes later, hopefully after the frosts. Clearing the ground under our tree lines, we've got our six hens here and this house moves along every day. So you can see that the grass is really long in front of them and then where they've done this amazing job. So they're eating a lot of the insects and the pests that might be a problem for the trees. They're also, um, these are soy free um, chickens. So they're eating some malted grains from the local brewery. They're eating some barley and they're eating some fava bean chips for some more protein. Uh, but they are particularly fond of insects and field folds. <laughs>